So I've been able to put together a daggers build that I think you guys are going to like, and it is really, really good. So let's get right into it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. I do appreciate it. We're going to go over everything you possibly need to know for this build from weapons, armor, talisman, stats, everything. There will be a full breakdown at the end of the video for every single tier of stats between 50, 100, and 150. So make sure to stay tuned for that. But we are going to go ahead and get started with the weapons because I think this is really, really important. You can get these weapons extraordinarily early in the game and you can start playing and building this build up really as you get into weeping peninsula it's a really fun build to play with you do a lot of damage very very quickly there is one drawback which we're going to talk about in the middle of this video but besides that everything else in this build is super super fun to play it relies heavily on stealth critical strikes and being very, very, very close to enemies and bosses so you can get as much damage as humanly possible out onto these enemies. So we're going to be using the Bloodstained Dagger. I didn't even know this dagger existed until I tried to do a build based on daggers and I found that this could actually be dropped from one of the enemies in Weeping Peninsula and it's very farmable and the Grace is very close to the enemy you're going to be farming. You're going to start off at the south of the Lookout Tower site of Grace and you're just going to run west right to the bridge where there's going to be one of these big beefy dagger humans and you're going to kill him over and over and over again until this dagger drops it only took me about 50 tries to get two daggers so it's not a horrible drop rate but it is a very very good weapon so let's go over why it's so good especially in the early game it has innate blood loss buildup already on it the only other dagger that i know of that has blood loss on it this early in the game is the reduvia and you can only get one of those in your first playthrough and you have to either have someone drop it for you or go through the second playthrough and get a second reduvia with this you can get two daggers that have blood loss build up on them already right at the beginning of the game. So I changed this dagger a little bit because I put Assassin's Gambit on it. This is going to allow you to be almost invisible to the enemy and have no footstep sound so you can get in for those really good critical hits. It has an arcane scaling of B, a strength scaling of D, and a dex scaling of E, and it's also going to have blood loss build up as 85. Now moving on to the second dagger, I have it equipped with the blood tax Ash of War, and you're going to have a strength scaling of B, a dex scaling of D, and an arcane scaling of D. But the reason that I put a blood affinity on this weapon is because its blood loss buildup is going to go from 85 all the way up to 113, giving us blood procs a lot faster, especially when we're hitting in rapid succession with this dagger. Now moving on to the armor, the drip of this set is absolutely phenomenal. I think I look amazing in this set if I don't say so myself. So we do have one piece of armor here that actually does serve a purpose. The rest is just for aesthetics and I think overall looks great. So the white mask is actually the piece of armor that we have a reason to be wearing. Once blood loss occurs in the vicinity, we get a plus 10% attack power for 20 seconds, which is going to allow us to pump out a ton more damage. Now, if you are using this build for PvP, just note that it does go down to 6% in PvP because of the most recent patch 1.09. So just keep that at the forefront of your mind if you're trying to take this build into PvP. The next pieces of armor that we're going to be using is the Bloodhound Knight armor, the Exile Gauntlets, and the Nox Greaves. All these are purely aesthetic, but I do think they pull together the idea of an assassin very, very well in Elden Ring. So if you guys have some different armor sets that you think should be an assassin, leave it down in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. Love to try them out myself. Moving on to what makes this build work so well, and that's the talisman lineup that we're currently using. The first talisman we're going to talk about here is the green turtle talisman. Using daggers is going to eat up so much stamina that if you don't have an exorbitant amount of endurance, you're going to need to use some form of stamina talisman. I'm using the green turtle talisman because it's going to raise my stamina recovery speed by eight per second, which is a 17.7% increase, which is going to help me out a ton because typically while I'm playing this build, I go in, do a ton of attacking, and then I back off to get my stamina back. This just allows me to get that stamina back that much quicker so I can get back in the fray and start doing more damage. Our second talisman is going to be the Godskin Swaddling Cloth. This is going to restore HP with successive attacks, so we need to break this down a little bit because it works differently with different weapons, different vigor levels. There's just a ton that goes into this, and I'm just going to give you a very, very easy easy crash course. Long story short, how this talisman works, when you start getting your health back, and for daggers, that's after seven attacks, you are going to get a flat amount of health back and a percentage based off where your vigor is currently at. So for our vigor level, we are going to be getting a flat 30 health back and 3% on top of that. If you have a 
higher vigor level, then you will get more health back and a larger percent based off your vigor level. But overall, the reason that we're using this talisman is because we are in the fray a ton, we are attacking a ton, and we're going to be taking a lot of damage. So because we're not using something to negate that damage, like a dragon shield talisman, we are going to be getting health back very, very quickly when we are continually attacking. So I love this talisman. I think it's really, really nice. If you did want to get more health back, you could replace the stamina talisman with the taker's cameo, which restores health when you defeat enemies. So you'll just be getting a lot of health back instead of just a smaller percentage. But overall, I did choose the stamina talisman because we really needed it for this build. Our third talisman is going to be the dagger talisman. Now this one is a really interesting one because I hadn't really focused on backstabs or critical hits a lot in any of my past playthroughs or builds, but this talisman is going to increase our critical damage by 17%. So that's any parry, any backstab, anytime you get a critical strike, this is going to be a 17% damage increase, which is absolutely massive. I don't know if you remember the very beginning of the video where I stabbed that knight's cavalry in the chest on the ground, but it took half of his health off, which was absolutely incredible. So this is definitely a really cool talisman to use, a very unique talisman and kind of a niche talisman, but it works very well with our dagger build. Moving on to our fourth and final talisman, this last talisman is an absolute must for any build that's attacking in rapid succession. We are going to be using the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, which is going to greatly increase our attack power with successive attacks. Now, there are three different tiers to the attack power boost that you get, depending on how many hits you get on the target. The first is 6%, the second tier is 8%, and the third tier is 13%. When you are attacking as fast as we are with daggers, you will immediately get a 13% attack power boost the second you start attacking, because you're hitting so fast, you don't even have time to get the the six or eight percent so it just goes right to the final percentage with the attack power boost which is really awesome and it is definitely worth it with this build if you don't have the rotten wing sword insignia you can use Millicent's prosthesis as a replacement but this is what i have because i feel it's the better of the two let's move into our flask of wondrous physics so we're going to be using the thorny crack tier which is going to temporarily boost successive attack power this is going to give you a really really good attack power boost because we are attacking so often it's going to stack very very fast and you're going to get a damage increase by nine percent thirteen percent and 20% and this also is going to stack with the winged sword insignia and Millicent's prosthesis if you decide to use that as well. So this is definitely a solid option for us. It's going to help us pump out way more damage than we typically would without it. Now the second tier we're using is going to be the green spill crystal tier. Now this is going to actually increase our stamina and like we talked about before we are going to need an increase of stamina because daggers really chew up your stamina. The green spill crystal tier is going to give you a 15% increase to your max stamina for three minutes. So this is definitely a really good buff for us and it's going to last a while. Typically you are not going to be fighting a boss for three minutes unless it's something like the Elden Beast. But that being said, this is definitely a solid choice for us when it comes to our Flask of Wonders Physic. It's just going to allow us to get more damage out. So before we get into the summons, I do want to just mention a few things about this build that make it a little bit more difficult to play than, let's say, other builds that I've done before. First off, with daggers, you have to be extremely close to your enemies, which means your dodges have to be absolutely perfect and you have to be able to anticipate when the attack are coming as well as when you can actually attack with these daggers because you're going to have to close some distance to actually attack the bosses and the NPCs in this game. The other thing that I've noticed is when you go up against really beefy enemies like the stone giant you just saw in this video, your daggers are going to bounce right off. So unless you're doing heavy attacks, you're not going to be able to do as much flurry damage as you normally would on a boss that actually allows you to hit them in rapid succession. But besides those only two critiques, this build is incredibly fun and I think you should definitely try it out because you're going to be able to just run through the game as a lot of bosses and NPCs are susceptible to bleed. And lastly, let's go ahead and get into our summons. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this because overall, all you want is a summon that's going to be able to proc bleed for you because that's going to allow your mask to also proc to give you a damage boost. So whether you're procking the bleed or your summon is procking a bleed, either way, you're going to be getting that damage boost. And the more bleed procs that are going around, the better you're going to do against bosses and NPCs within Elden Ring. So for example, you can use something like the pumpkin head ashes, the vulgar militia ashes, obviously since you are a blood build you could use your mimic tier and then also I believe the bloodhound knight flow is also going to do bleed damage as well so any of those would work for you and I think you should definitely be checking those out because they're going to make things easier on you overall if you don't want to use summons guess what this build doesn't require to use them because you typically kill everything so fast that you don't really need them in general so that's going to be it for the dual dagger bleed build guys I hope you enjoyed it I am going to leave stats on the screen right now first I'll leave the stats for 50 100 and 150 just so you guys can see exactly 
exactly how to allocate your stats on your leveling journey. And then I'll also show my stats currently on the screen. Right now, I am currently level 140, and I have put most of my stats into Arcane, Vigor, and Endurance. So, hope this helps you out, guys. I really enjoyed making this build. I actually love playing as this build, so I'm probably going to stick with this build on this character for a while. And I'm going to be working on some other builds here really, really soon. So, make sure to stay tuned for that. I have long-form videos coming out with builds and Elden Ring content every Monday and Friday. And then I have YouTube Shorts coming out every single day, multiple times a day, with different armor sets, content for Elden Ring. And we are moving into some Breath of the Wild Tears of the Kingdom content next month. So, I hope you guys are excited for that. If you have not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so you can know when I make more content. I do appreciate each and every one of you. So, until next time, guys, stay safe, enjoy the game, and I'll see you in the next one.